Hi everyone, my name is Nina Melendez. I am the virtual content specialist for multilingual learners and English language learners for math grades nine through 12. Today we are going to be looking at Algebra 1, week 26, day 21. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to use Padlet to answer your summarize. Also, how to use Desmos as a tool to aid you in your explore portion of the lesson. The key words for today are functions, x-intercepts, vertex, and I want you to start thinking about what does the word consider and observations mean. Okay. So looking first, before we start our lesson, I want us to focus on a couple keywords. The keyword function. So the keyword Function is something that you're going to need to be able to identify throughout today's lesson. Okay, so how do I how do you identify if something is or isn't a function? Remember, a function is a relation where every input has a single output. Okay, a function is a relation where every input has a single output. Okay, so here we have an example of what a function looks like. Every input has a single output. Now, we can say that this is not a function because each input doesn't have a single output. Remember, you can also do the vertical line test when trying out if something is a function in a graph. We can look right here. If I throw a vertical line and it touches the graph only once, I can now say that this is a function. The other words we're gonna look at, we've seen in our previous lessons, and hopefully you're getting more familiar with these words. We're gonna look at the word vertex, which is that highest or lowest point on a graph. Remember, it's a coordinate, an X and a Y. We're gonna look at the words zeros. Remember, X intercept and zeros, we are referring to the same thing. Okay, and remember, we can express it in different ways. We can write it in this way, or we can write it as x equals. And the word to consider. What does it mean to consider something? And what does it mean to make an observation? Okay, so let's look at our launch. Let's look at our launch. I'm going to go ahead and erase what I had marked here. And we are going to look at what our launch asks. It asks us to consider two functions. Okay, so if you need to pause here and go back and look at those keywords and make sure you have them written down and you're really understanding them, do that now. If not, you can move on forward. So it, to consider, you're going to look at these two functions and make sure you are answering your introduction launch. It says, how would you, how would the graphs be similar? How would they be different? So looking at them, what do you think is going to be similar between the graphs? What do you think is going to be different between these graphs? Now, after this, we are going to move on to our explore portion. Now, for our explore portion, it says, consider two functions, same as our launch, f of x equals x times x plus 4, and g of x equals x times x minus 4. So we are seeing key differences between these. So I have this one right here, the table for the first graph, and I have the table for the second graph right here. Now, it says, complete the the table of values for each function. So we have missing values in each of these graphs. So now we need to complete these values. How can you complete these values? So one thing is to use the tools of your, at your disposal. You can go into your Desmos graphing calculator, which I have linked right here. But remember, you can always use Desmos. And once Desmos opens up, you are going to make sure you are inputting the correct function. Do one at a time, okay? Instead of writing f of x, I'm going to write y equals x times x plus four. I'm gonna go ahead and go into Desmos and write y equals 
x times x plus 4. Okay, and I'm able to see my graph right here. Now, we need to fill out a table of values. How can I do this? Remember, you can go to your edit list right here in Desmos and ask it to give you a table. Convert to table. Now you have a table of values that you can pass. So you will go over here and you need negative 5, negative 4, 0, 1, 2, 3. Remember, any values that you need, you can always continue writing them to be able to find them. So you have 1, 5, 0, 0, 1, 5, and so forth. So in the lesson, you can go ahead and fill out your table of values, 0, 0, 1, 5, and so forth. Fill it out for your first one, and then go ahead, go right back into Desmos, and fill out your second table. These two tables are going to help you for your next slide. Okay, these two tables will help you for your next slide. In your following slide, you are going to be asked to plot the points. So in your slides, you these are all movable pieces. So if you make sure you don't have it in presenter mode, you can actually select the point and start graphing both of them. Remember, the green one is meant to graph g of x. The red one is meant to graph f of x. Okay, and refer back to the table that you should have created in this previous slide. In this previous slide, it also asks you to identify the x-intercept and the vertex. I have put an organizer here where you can fill out the x-intercept and the vertex of that graph. In this portion, it says, make a couple of observations about the two graphs. So once you have everything plotted and in place, it wants you to observe. Remember, to observe means to look. You are looking and identifying key things in this graph. You are looking and identifying key things within this graph. How is this going to help me through the lesson? This will help me to identify how does the function relate to the graph of that function. After you've identified key things and written down your observations, you should screenshot your graph. Remember, not everyone has these devices, but you can always go into Google and check what command does your specific device require. But you're going to screenshot the previous slide. You're screenshotting this one. After you screenshot, your teacher might actually share you on a Padlet, and this Padlet will allow you to share your work with your classmates. Remember to be respectful of your classmates' work and to leave meaningful comments. So for your compare and connect, it says look at the graphs and make observations. So the first thing we're going to do is share our work. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this Padlet. So the Padlet should open up on a new web page. And once it's open, it might be blank or it might already have some of your classmates' work. You're going to go down to this plus button right here and a new um, submission is going to pop up for you. You can either write your name, write that this is the summarized, and you want to make sure you are sharing your picture. So you're going to go to this icon to be able to upload from your computer. You're gonna click pick a file. I'm going to pick this as an example. And the file is uploaded. So now you are able to add comments here and your classmates are able to see your work. This is a helpful way for you to share your work with your classmates and in that same manner you're able to learn and grow more. Now on the next slide we are also going to be seeing another Padlet. 
So on your final summarize, it says, what is important to pay attention to when graphing quadratic functions in factored form? So I want you to think before answering, what things you think are important? Make a list, maybe have something next to you where you can write it down. Then you're going to click answer here. Now this Padlet is similar to the other one where you, you can write a submission. Same way on the corner, you're gonna click a plus, but here you are going to answer the question. The question is right up here, just in case if you need to refer back to it. And I would suggest that you write what best you learned from today's lesson. What is important to pay attention to? It is important to pay attention to, and now you are going to write what you found out it's important to pay attention to. Remember, your classmates will be writing simultaneously as you are doing this. Therefore, I suggest that you take notes on what your classmates are writing. That way, when you go back to your presentation to record your notes, you can write very meaningful feedback for yourself that you can refer back to throughout your studies. I hope this is helpful and have a good day.